hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're going to be looking at the micro dial tapering jig. Well, I have had this jig on my list of things that I would like to have in my shop for a very long time. And you saw it just recently on my What Did Kenny Get For His Birthday uh, episode of the show. And on today's show, we're going to unbox this thing. We're going to go through and assemble it. And we're going to talk a little bit about how it works. But either way, let's get over to the bench and have a look at this thing. Well, for the most part, this jig comes pre-assembled. Um, I'm just going to open up these packages here and get our our parts out. So we'll dump these little rubber O washers out and then we'll dump all this other stuff out and then we'll start the assembly. Now we're going to start with our memory stops. One of them will be situated right here and you just want to take a T-bolt, place it in the bottom. You want to make sure it's sitting in the slot properly where it's supposed to go. You will place your memory stop right over top and with one of the thumb screws then you will just tighten it down. Your second memory stop installs the exact same way except that will go in this angled slot right back here. Again, same concept, get that T-nut in there and we will place our memory stop right here just like that. And Again, another quarter 20 thumb screw on there. And we'll just tighten it down just a little bit to keep it from wiggling around on us. Our next piece that we're going to mount will be our handle. And that gets mounted in these slots right here. Now you could mount it up here as well if you want. It's up to you. It's all personal preference at that point. But they come with some T-nuts. We're going to place them underneath, again, making sure that they're in that track. We're going to place our handle over top. And then using one of the screws and washers for the handle, we will just screw this into place. And then we'll repeat the process for the back of the handle. And that's our handle installed. The next piece that we're going to install will be our trailing block. We're going to place a T-bolt up through our trailing block. We're going to place one of our flange washers here over top of it and then one of our thumb screws on top of that. Just loosely. And we'll repeat it for the other hole. So a T-bolt and then one of our flange washers. Once you get that done, the thumb screw will just go on top. And this gets stored in this section right here. So you'll just slide it in place with those flange washers, tighten it down, and there you go. It's onboard storage, and that's where it will stay. This unit is designed to be used with a gripper from the same company. And the grippers get mounted on the side here during use. So for that, you've got a T-bolt. The T-bolt will go up through into the slot here at the front. You'll have a little O-ring that goes down over this T-bolt and that will keep it so that our bolts stay in place. So we'll slide that on top of there. We're going to add a flange nut and then we will place a thumb screw on top of that. Now this is just one of the mounting bolts. There are four in total. One here, one here, and one here. And that, my friends, is the jig completely assembled. Now there are several ways that you can use this jig. Uh, so let's touch on and look at a couple of those ways. Now one of the ways to set this jig is by the degree of the taper that you're cutting. Now they try to make this as simple as possible and here we have our degree scale. This section right here, this is what allows you to have your positive stops for your different angles. And if I rotate this, you lift and turn, it'll lock in here. 
this little X. I don't know if you can see that, but that is there is no pin. That means that this can float freely. You can line it up with the angle that you want, tighten down the retaining screw or the locking screw, and then you are locked in to that angle. However, if you don't want to be lining it up manually, you can line it up using your positive stop pins. And they're color-coded, so it's pretty hard to mess it up. Your degrees here that are in red will use this pin here, which is in red. If your measurement or your line is green, you use this set pin to set the degree because it is adjustable in, I believe it's like one eighth of a degree. So let's just say that you want this. I'm going to do something simple. Let's say you want to do a six degree taper. The number six is red. So you want to place it, lift this, place it onto the red scale, which has the positive stops. Jig over to the line up with the eight. There you go. It's snapped in there. It's locked in at eight degrees and you can tighten down your set knob and you're done. You are now set for an eight degree taper. This is not a full explanation of this, of course. It's just giving you an idea of how it adjusts. If any of your increments are in yellow that you want, again, you just turn it to that scale and the positive stop, the pin will lock in at whatever measurement you want. And then if you tighten down your set knob, you're good to go. So there you go. That is one way to adjust it with a known angle or a known degree of angle. So another way this jig is usable is by rise and run. And it has a scale for this the same way as it has a scale for the known degree. So what you want to do is you want to lay out your board. Lay it out for the taper that you need. And then once you're done, figure out how much that taper is. Measure the top end of your board where there is no taper and then the bottom end of your board and figure out what the difference is. If the difference is 3 8 of an inch, then your, your taper is 3 8 of an inch. But that is not the setting here. That's not rise over run. There is a calculation for rise over run. So I've laid out my taper here. Hopefully you can see that and the difference between the far end and this end here is 3 eighths of an inch. And that's what I want to taper this piece at. The length of my piece is 18 inches long. So in following that formula now, it would be the rise times 12 all over the run, and that is equal to the setting of your micro jig. So in this case, our rise, or our taper, is 3 eighths of an inch times 12, all divided by the length of our taper, which is our run, which is 18, and that all totals one quarter. So at this point now, you would want to come over to your tapering jig. You would, using the proper scale, check the colors and the color coding, we're going to turn this and set our jig at the one quarter mark, which means that it tapers in at one quarter of an inch per foot. And then this knob here, this is your set knob. We will just give that a little bit of a turn. And that's it. Your jig is now set. Now this jig is meant to run on our fence. So at this point in time, you've got your keeper right here this is the keeper of your jig that will keep your stock in line you will just place your stock in line with that keeper and set it so that your blade starts cutting at the edge of your board and now with your fence set this should cut that taper that we just drew out And hopefully here you can see that although it is a little bit off, it's uniformly off all the way up and down. So that rise and run calculation was right and it cut it perfectly. 
where the adjustment lacked here was my adjustment of the fence to the blade. That's no big deal. We shift it over just a tiny little bit and then it's set. You can cut all your pieces at that rise and run. So there you go. There's a practical application on the rise and run setting of the jig. Well, what if you don't know the rise and the run? What if you don't know the angle? Well, you can set it by aligning it with your table saw slot. So we will say this angle right here looks nice and pretty and we will draw it on here. So you've got your layout. You need to slide your piece over and we're going to bring our fence out just until the edge of our miter slot here is in line with the very front of our taper. And once you get that in line and your jig up is up against your fence, all you need to do is loosen it, your tightening knob, and you can slide this whole assembly out just like this. And we're going to line it up so that the back of our cut is in line with our miter slot as well. And once you get that in place and you're happy with your alignment, lock it down and there you go. Your jig is set. You're done. So now we can slide our fence over the same way like we did before, lining it up with our blade and make our cut. So that there is the main functions of cutting the tapers. Three ways of you setting this jig up for the tapers, both with rise and run, or if you prefer the angles, or setting it up by eye according to your miter slot. What if you want to cut something small like this, a two inch wide piece? Now you saw that before with the wider board, you're able to hold it and your keeper back here is able to hold your piece just fine. But what if that doesn't suit you? What if you're doing a small little piece like this? Well, I did say that this was meant to use in conjunction with the grippers. And I'm just going to show you here how that works. So the way it works is that this section here of the gripper, your extendable foot, that will attach underneath our bolts here that we put with our flange. They'll slide into place. Just like this. And once you get them locked in where you want them, they just push in and then the thumb screws will lock them down. And we'll install our second gripper in place on our jig. Just like that, it just slides onto those flange washers. Just like that, there we go. And now we can adjust our jig, making sure that none of our pieces are going to come in contact with our blade. What you wanna do is you wanna raise your blade up to be able to cut your stock and then do a dry run. Just make sure that you're not gonna cut into any of your pieces and we're good. So all we need to do now is place our stock underneath the gripper up against our retainer at the back. And once we get it there, we will lock down our grippers. Just like that. And once you get them locked down, all you have to do is follow through with the cut. And just like that, our piece was cut and cut safely. We had no issues whatsoever as far as getting our fingers anywhere near that blade. Well, there is one more feature of this jig that attracted me to it, and it is the jointing feature. And I'll show you how to set it up. I'm not actually gonna demonstrate it, but what it does is it allows you to take a board that has uneven edges, an uneven side, and joint one edge to give you a flat reference point. All you need to do, and it, it does take a little bit of adjustment, but nothing serious, 
So this locking knob, you're going to take this out. Or at least the knob itself. You'll take that out and you'll also take out this pivot knob. So then what you're going to do is you're going to take this entire piece and shift it up one inch so that it sits here in these straight slots. And it says right here, jointing slot. And once you get it lined up with those, it'll, it'll lay perfectly in place. Once you get it there, you just want to place your washer back down and then your thumb screws. Then your trailing block, which we stored here earlier, this will come out and this will now mount right back here. You can mount it here, you can mount it here, whatever suits you. So I'm gonna mount it in this one. So you'll just slide it in. Now it is adjustable so that you can adjust it for flush mounting up to your uneven piece of wood. And once you get it set, you will lock these down. Now here's the object of this here. So now all you do is, we'll have this piece of plywood here, just pretend that it's all jagged edge. You don't want to run this jagged edge against your fence, but you will now use the flat edge of your micro jig. And that will go against the fence of your table saw. So you have a now a reference. There are all kinds of holes here. There are key holes over here to place a screw down to hold this board if you need it. There's another one right here. There's a couple back here in this back corner should you require those. Either way, once you get it secured, you can then adjust your fence just by sliding it back and forth to get it as square as you can to your blade and then have it pressed up against your back retainer here and once you're happy with that, you can lock down your two jointing knobs. Now what you have essentially is a flat edge here to ride against your fence. And it doesn't matter that the board is crooked because it's not running against the fence. It's being held in place by the jig and using the jig as your flat reference point over here. Again, like I said, you're going to want to screw it in place and it would even be helpful as well at this point to use a gripper to hold this down as you're running it through your blade. But either way, by using it like this and running it through the saw, you will duplicate the flat straight edge on this side of the tapering jig, making this a nice straight clean edge. So just another little feature of this jig that you could use it as an edge jointer as well. And there you have it. The micro dial tapering jig. Guys, I don't know what to tell you about this jig. Um, simply because I haven't had the chance to put it to use. I haven't had the chance to put it through some paces. And normally here on the show, I have no problems giving a review, but I cannot give a review until I've had the chance to extensively use the product to see if I like it or dislike it. Um, that takes months. That takes months and it takes more than just a little bit of test cutting with plywood on a table saw. There are a lot of things to consider when giving a review of the jig, things like ease of use, ease of setup, safety features, um, whether or not it's sturdy, do the things break, are those threaded inserts going to pull out of the jig, etc, etc. And it takes time to figure that out. But I wanted to bring the jig to your attention today because I think it has a lot of features um, that, well, you know what, they're very attractive. And they're especially attractive to me at this point. And that's why I've wanted to, to get a hold of the jig and to try it out. Features like the fact that it's usable with the grippers, which adds an element of safety where my fingers are nowhere near the blade and I don't have to hold those uh, legs of a table, let's say, while trying to cut the tapers. The fact that you can do eight-sided tapers with this thing, that's kind of another cool little feature. Um, just a little added bonus to it, the fact that you have exact repeatable results with 
um, positive stops at one eight degree increments on, in the degree scale and I can't remember the exact one on the rise and run scale but repeatable results even on setting it by eye being able to get the positive stops and set those stops so that you can repeat the results even if you don't know the measurements or the degree of the angle that you're trying to cut being able to adjust by degree or by rise and run um, it's the versatility there to be able to use the jig as you want to use it uh, some of them a lot of the jigs that i've seen out there they are only adjustable and they are only um, set by lining it up with that miter slot there is no positive stops on a lot of them that i've seen out there and they certainly do not incorporate rise and run, nor do they incorporate degrees. So, I don't know. Do I like the jig so far on first glance? Yes, I do. I like the way it feels. I like the way it acts. I like the way it looks. I like the way it felt while I was using it. Even if it was on a piece of plywood, it felt secure the whole time. Here's the kicker. This thing's not cheap. And I know that when I post the link to it down below, you guys are going to say, holy crow, that's expensive. Hence why it was a gift. Hence why this is not something that I just went out and bought because I find it pretty hard to justify paying that kind of money for a tapering jig for the amount that I would actually use the jig. But to receive one as a present is, is fantastic and that's the way it works for me. Guys, I'm hoping that in the next few months I'm going to have a chance to bring you a few projects using this jig and uh, get a chance to really try it out, put it through its paces, and good or bad, let you know what the deal is and how it works. But for now, all I can really bring you is a short little uh, feature of each one of, of its capabilities, and we can go from there. Um, I'm sure it does a little more here, and I'm sure there's more to explain, but we'll have to leave that for another day. I want to thank you so much for tuning in today. If you haven't already, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Click the bell so that you don't miss notifications of future episodes of the show. Uh, I've got some great expectations of this jig, and I hope it lives up to it. Uh, I, I hope you found it useful. I hope if you had some questions about the jig, maybe the show answered them for you. And uh, if not, drop a comment below and I'll try to do my best to answer them. But more importantly, guys, I honestly hope that you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesday. <laughs>